Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Monday, December 5th, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. So a few updates for you this week, including approval of Hemgenix for Hemophilia B, Rebiota for C. diff infection, and Reslidia for refractory AML. As always, feel free to skip around. I'm going to include times in the show notes so you get the updates that interest you. First up this week, the FDA approved Etranacogene Desaparvovec, which goes by brand name Hemgenix, an adeno-associated virus vector-based gene therapy for the treatment of adults with hemophilia B who currently use factor IX prophylaxis therapy or have current or historical life-threatening hemorrhage or have repeated serious spontaneous bleeding episodes. Hemophilia B is a genetic disorder resulting from missing or insufficient levels of blood clotting factor IX, a protein needed to produce blood clots to stop bleeding. Symptoms can include prolonged or heavy bleeding after an injury, surgery, or dental procedure, and in severe cases, bleeding episodes can occur spontaneously without a clear cause. Prolonged bleeding episodes can lead to serious complications such as bleeding into the joints, muscles, or internal organs, including the brain. Most individuals who have hemophilia B and experience symptoms are men. The prevalence of hemophilia B in the population is about 1 in 40,000. Hemophilia B represents about 15% of patients with hemophilia. Many women carriers of the disease have no symptoms. However, an estimated 10 to 25% of women carriers have mild symptoms, and in rare cases, women may have moderate or severe symptoms. Treatment typically involves replacing the missing or deficient clotting factor to improve the body's ability to stop bleeding and promote healing. Patients with severe hemophilia B typically require a routine treatment regimen of IV infusions of factor IX replacement products to maintain sufficient levels of clotting factor to prevent bleeding episodes. Hemgenix is a one-time gene therapy product given as a single dose by IV infusion. Hemgenix consists of a viral vector carrying a gene of clotting factor IX. The gene is expressed in the liver to produce factor IX protein to increase blood levels of factor IX and thereby limit bleeding episodes. The safety and effectiveness of Hemgenix were evaluated in two studies of 57 adult men 18 to 75 years of age with severe or moderately severe hemophilia B. Effectiveness was established based on decreases in the men's annualized bleeding rate and in one study, which had 54 participants, the subjects had increases in factor IX activity levels, a decreased need for routine factor IX replacement prophylaxis, and a 54% reduction in annualized bleeding rate compared to baseline. The most common adverse reactions associated with Hemgenix included liver enzyme elevations, headache, mild infusion related reactions, and flu-like symptoms. Patients should be monitored for adverse infusion reactions and liver enzyme elevations in their blood. This application received priority review, orphan, and breakthrough therapy designations, and the FDA granted approval of Hemgenix to CSL Bearing LLC. Also this week, the FDA approved Rebiota, the first fecal microbiota product approved by the agency. Rebiota is approved for the prevention of recurrence of Clostridium difficile infection in individuals 18 years of age and older. 
It is for use after an individual has completed antibiotic treatment for recurrent CDI. Clostridium difficile is a bacterium that can cause CDI, a potentially life-threatening disease resulting in diarrhea and significant inflammation of the colon. In the United States, CDI is associated with about 15,000 to 30,000 deaths annually. The intestinal tract contains millions of microorganisms, often referred to as the gut flora or gut microbiome. Certain situations, such as taking antibiotics to treat an infection, may change the balance of microorganisms in the gut, allowing C. diff to multiply and release toxins causing diarrhea, abdominal pain, fever, and in some cases, organ failure and death. Other factors that can increase the risk for CDI include age older than 65 years, hospitalization, a weakened immune system, and a previous history of CDI. After recovering from CDI, individuals may get the infection again, often multiple times, a condition known as recurrent CDI. The risk of additional recurrences increases with each infection and treatment options for recurrent CDI are limited. The administration of fecal microbiota is thought to facilitate restoration of the gut flora to prevent further episodes of CDI. Rebiota is administered rectally as a single dose. Rebiota is prepared from stool donated by qualified individuals. The donors and the donated stool are tested for a panel of transmissible pathogens. However, as Rebiota is manufactured from human fecal matter, it may carry a risk of transmitting infectious agents. In addition, Rebiota may contain food allergens, the potential for the product to cause severe adverse reactions due to food allergens is unknown. The safety of Rebiota was assessed from two randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical studies and from open-label clinical studies conducted in the United States and in Canada. The participants had a history of one or more recurrences of CDI. They received one or more doses of Rebiota or placebo 24 to 72 hours after completion of antibiotic treatment for their CDI. Participants' CDI was under control at the time of receipt of Rebiota or placebo. Across these studies, 978 individuals age 18 years and older received at least one dose of Rebiota. In one study, among 180 Rebiota recipients, when compared to 87 placebo recipients, the most common side effect after receiving one dose of Rebiota were abdominal pain, diarrhea, abdominal bloating, gas, and nausea. The effectiveness of Rebiota was evaluated in an analysis of data from a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, multi-center study. The analysis included 177 adults who received one dose of Rebiota and 85 who received one dose of placebo in this study. It also incorporated success rates from a different placebo-controlled study in which 39 adults received one dose of Rebiota and one dose of placebo and 43 adults received two doses of placebo. Success in preventing recurrent CDI was defined as the absence of CDI diarrhea within eight weeks of administration of Rebiota or placebo. In a statistical analysis that took into account both studies, the overall estimated rate of success in preventing recurrent CDI through eight weeks was significantly higher in the Rebiota group than in the placebo group. 70% Rebiota, 57% placebo. This application was granted fast track, breakthrough, and orphan drug designations, and the FDA granted approval of Rebiota to Faring Pharmaceuticals. And finally this week, the FDA approved Olutacitinib, which goes by brand name Reslidia, for adult patients with relapsed or refractory acute myeloid leukemia with a susceptible IDH1 mutation as detected by an FDA-approved test. 
Leukemias are cancers that start in cells that would normally develop into different types of blood cells. Most often, leukemia starts in early forms of white blood cells, but some leukemias start in other blood cell types. There are several types of leukemia, which are divided based mainly on whether the leukemia is acute or fast-growing, or chronic or slow-growing, and whether it starts in myeloid cells or lymphoid cells. Acute myeloid leukemia starts in the bone marrow, that's the soft inner part of certain bones where new blood cells are made, but most often it quickly moves into the blood as well. It can sometimes spread to other parts of the body, including the lymph nodes, liver, spleen, central nervous system, and testicles. Approval was based on an open-label, single-arm, multi-center clinical trial that included 147 adult patients with relapsed or refractory AML with an IDH1 mutation. Reslidia was given orally 150 mg twice daily until disease progression, unacceptable toxicity, or hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. The median treatment duration was 4.7 months, and 16 patients underwent hematopoietic stem cell transplantation following Reslidia. Efficacy was established on the rate of complete remission, plus complete remission with partial hematologic recovery, the duration of complete remission, and the rate of conversion from transfusion dependence to independence. The complete remission rate was 35%, and a median time to complete remission was 1.9 months, and the median duration of complete remission was 25.9 months. Among the 86 patients who were dependent on red blood cell and or platelet transfusions at baseline, 34% became independent of red blood cell and platelet transfusions during any 56-day post-baseline period. Of the 61 patients who were independent of both red blood cell and platelet transfusions at baseline, 64% remained transfusion independent during any 56-day post-baseline period. The most common side effects were nausea, fatigue, arthralgia, constipation, leukocystosis, dyspnea, fever, mucocystitis, diarrhea, and transaminitis. The prescribing information contains a boxed warning alerting healthcare professionals and patients about the risk of differentiation syndrome, which can be fatal. The recommended Reslidia dose is 150 mg taken orally twice daily, on an empty stomach at least one hour before or two hours after a meal, until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity. For patients without disease progression or unacceptable toxicity, treatment is recommended for a minimum of six months, allowing for clinical response. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.